In this video, I'm going to show you how you can improve performance in an underpowered PC. Okay, so it looks like I'm going to be doing a little bit of travel this fall. And I've come to the decision that I don't want to bring my main laptop with me every time I go to a conference, like in Las Vegas, for example. I'd rather bring something a little bit less expensive and maybe a little bit smaller and lighter. And so I picked up um, a Surface Pro 3 that you can see here. And um, it's a very underpowered PC. So uh, I wanted to optimize it and I'm going to share that process with all of you today. The goals are, of course, I'm going to be using this on AC power. So I'm not concerned about conserving battery life. I'm looking for performance over power saving. So that's definitely um, one of the things. The built-in storage on this machine is very small, only 128 gigabytes. So I want to make sure that I'm very conservative with the applications that I choose and try to recover as much space on that drive as possible. Um, I'm not going to be upgrading to Windows 11. Some of you might be wondering about that. This is an old enough piece of hardware. It does have the TCM, I think it's called, uh, TCM 2.0, but it is a fourth generation processor. It's an Intel i5 processor. Uh, it only has four gigabytes of RAM as well. So I want to keep it with Windows 10 because I know Windows 10 can be optimized and worked well. So here's what I've done at the start of this video. I've wiped the hard drive. I've installed Windows 10. I've installed all the applications, but only the applications I intend to use when I travel. And of course, I've installed all the updates for this machine as well. So basically, it's ready to go. So now I'll share with you the steps that I take when I want to improve performance on an underpowered PC. Okay, so we're going to start on the desktop here. And a couple of things to make note of is that now the search bar, of course, displays this uh, search highlights area if you roll over it as well as this news and interest item down here also shows up now obviously if i'm presenting at a conference or demoing something for my youtube channel i don't want these sorts of things to pop up so i'm going to get rid of those to do that we just right click on the taskbar First of all, we're going to go up to search and we can uncheck show search highlights and that will get rid of that little icon that creates the pop up. Alternatively, and this is something I prefer to do, is to replace the search box with a search icon and you can do that as well. And that also gets rid of the little pop up item. Now let's right click on the taskbar yet again and we'll go to news and interests and uh, we simply want to turn that item off. So now, of course, the uh, information and the rollover are gone for that item as well. The other thing we want to do on the desktop, and this used to be done in the control panel, but it has to do with your power mode and you can click on the battery icon and you'll notice that currently I'm plugged in, but I've got sort of an intermediate performance selected, better performance, if you will. Instead of that, I'm going to drag this right over to best performance. Remember, my goal is to run this laptop um, using AC power. So I'm not concerned about conserving battery power. I want this to be uh, running at the maximum performance that this machine is capable of. So now we're going to get into the Windows settings themselves. So I'm going to click on the start button and select the settings icon. And the first area we're going to deal with is under system. We'll kind of go through these in order. So you'll see exactly the steps that you need to perform in display. There is an option down here at the bottom for graphics settings. So I'm going to use this. This is a not well known area here. 
And if I want to ensure that I'm getting the best performance from certain applications, I can browse to those applications that are currently installed on my computer here. So I'm going to go to the C drive, go to Program Files, Adobe, and I'm going to choose Adobe Captivate 2019. We'll scroll down to the app itself and select that and click on Add. And now, of course, this adds that specific application to this graphic settings area here. If I click on Options, I can choose what I prefer. So do I want to let Windows decide? Do I want to choose a power saving choice for this application? Or do I want high performance? And I think we'll all agree that under these circumstances, I want high performance. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And of course, you can do this for any other applications that are important for you. Again, this laptop or tablet, whatever you want to call it, is primarily going to be used for doing presentations at conferences with Adobe Captivate. So I'm good with this. So I'm going to go back to the system area. And now we're going to click on notifications and actions. And quite simply, um, you know, I don't need interruptions when I'm doing my demos. So I'm going to turn off notifications. And I'm also going to uncheck show me the Windows welcome experience, suggest ways I can finish setting up my device, and uncheck get tips, tricks, and suggestions as I use Windows. Now this will also have an effect on focus assist, but you can click there and simply check to see that it's set for alarms only. Next, we're going to move down to storage. Here's where you can configure storage sense. And the way I'm going to set it up is basically with storage saving in mind. This storage uh, that's on this particular machine is only 128 gigabytes. So I need to maximize this as best I can at all times. So I'm going to configure Storage Sense. I'm going to turn it on and run Storage Sense uh, during low free disk space. That means it's going to be constantly monitoring in the background. Instead, I'm going to schedule it to occur every week. We'll delete temporary files that my apps aren't using. And we're going to delete the items in the recycle bin every 14 days. Downloads folder, also 14 days. And I have two OneDrive accounts. Most of what I'm saving um, file-wise is going to be in OneDrive and up in the cloud. So we're going to set that also for 14 days. So if there are local files that I haven't used in 14 days, they'll revert back to their cloud edition. You can go ahead and run this now by clicking on Clean Now if you wish, but I'm just going to let it do something with this uh, at a later time. Next, we're going to go down to the About section of our system area within Settings. And what we're looking for here is Advanced System Settings, way over here on the right-hand side. Uh, on smaller screens, this might be down below as well. But I'm going to go ahead and click this. And this is going to open System Properties back from the old Control Panel days. And under Performance here, we're going to select Settings. And this will open up performance options. By default, Windows is set to choose what's best for this computer. But again, we're, in, we're trying to improve performance on this machine. So we're going to adjust for best performance. Now, there's a few things that I do like to turn back on here. Namely, show shadows under mouse pointers and under windows. And I also like to smooth the edge of screen fonts as well. This does take a little bit of resources, but you know you want your uh, laptop to look good when you're using it as well. So I'm going to click Apply and click OK and OK to close that. We're going to go back to the home page of the settings window and now go into devices. There's not much to do here, but there are a couple of things that you might want to deal with. Under autoplay, you can choose what happens when removable drives are connected or memory cards. And I prefer to just have it take no action. So if I plug in a USB thumb drive, Again, I don't want to be interrupted when I'm doing a demo. Uh, in this case here, I can set this up, both of these, to take no action. 
The other thing in the devices section that I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to USB and I'm going to uncheck these two items here. The first, of course, is the notification. So again, I don't want any notifications to interrupt me. And the second is to stop devices when my screen is off to help save battery. Again, I'm only concerned about performance. I'm not interested in battery saving techniques at all. So we'll leave those both unchecked. Back to home and we'll go to personalization. On the first section, we're dealing with background or wallpapers, if you will. And there's some debate whether turning a wallpaper on or off is beneficial. Um, regardless of what you choose, I would make sure to avoid themes, for example, where there's multiple images and that it's going to cycle through those images. Number one, of course, that does take some computing power to do so. And also it, when it comes to storage, which I don't have very much of on this machine, I don't want to store, you know, uh, dozens of background images. So I like to keep it simple. I'll usually just go with the default Windows uh, background, uh, boring as it may be, you know, at least this way I know that it's not cycling through different wallpapers every 30 seconds or whatever it would be. Next, we're going to go over to colors. And the one thing that you might notice here, actually in the background of this, is the transparency effects. We're going to turn that off and it will turn to just a gray color. Uh, again, you know, transparency effects does use some raw computing power, so you don't need it uh, unless you absolutely feel it's necessary. I would turn it off there. We'll now go down to the start section and basically here, turn off anything you don't need or use. I do like to show more tiles on my start menu normally, but because this is this machine is so devoid of applications, I really don't need it. So I'm going to leave that off. I'm going to um, keep the app list in the start menu. I do like that. If it's not pinned to the start menu, I may need to find something. Um, and I do like to uncheck show recently added apps and also uncheck show suggestions occasionally in the start menu. I usually uncheck show recently opened items in jump lists or start because I don't think that's necessary there. I do like to go in and choose which folders appear on start. This really doesn't have an impact on performance, but if there are uh, sections of your storage that you need to get to quickly, you can turn those on and make them accessible directly from the start menu. Let's go back to home now, and now we'll go to the app section. So starting here, the first thing you're going to want to do is uninstall any applications that you don't need or don't use. Of all the times I've used it, 3D Viewer has, um, you know, never been important to me, so I can uninstall that. And I'll go through all the applications that some people consider to be bloatware and get rid of those like the feedback hub for example is not an application that i use uh, i also don't use groove music so i'll uninstall that as well i'll go through this um, with a little bit more detail later on but suffice it to say if i don't need it i get rid of it from here the next section is default apps. Obviously, you want the appropriate apps to be running when you do something like, you know, click on an email address, for example. Uh, I do use the uh, Microsoft Outlook app instead of the Windows Mail app, so I'll change that. I've already changed the music player to VLC, which is another tool I use. It's a very small uh, and easy to run application over anything from Microsoft. And of course, my web browser of choice is Google Chrome. Next, I'm going to click on offline maps. And in the event that any maps have been downloaded, you certainly can delete all of those maps as well. Next to that is apps for websites. And on a related note, you can disable maps.windows.com from using your computer in that way. So that's a, a good choice to make as well. Now we'll choose video playback. I do like to optimize um, for the various choices here for video. 
And the other thing that I'll do, of course, again, remembering, of course, that we're not optimizing for battery, but for performance. And in this case, that performance is video quality. So I'm going to choose that as well. Finally, in the app section, we're going to take a look at the apps that run on startup. Now, I use many of the applications that you see here, like the Adobe apps, for example. Quite frankly, I don't use them that often. And really, this only helps you if you uh, start up your computer and run these applications almost every day or maybe even every hour. Uh, all that happens if I disable these apps that I don't think that I need on a regular basis is that they might take a little bit longer to load when I do go to run those. Things like OneDrive, I'm going to keep that running. Um, obviously, if PhoneLink was on, I would turn that off. Not sure what this one is here, but I do need pure text. That's a tool that I use quite frequently. And if Skype were on, I would certainly turn that off as well. Okay, so in conclusion, I hope that you have the same results that I did. I noticed an improvement in the performance on this machine. I do have to say that if you're only doing one or two of these steps, probably won't see a huge uh, improvement. But, you know, if you're following many of these steps, I think overall you'll get a good result. And, of course, I'd love to hear from you what sort of success you get uh, improving performance on your own devices, uh, whether they're underpowered or not. Feel free to leave a comment down below. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.